everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Are we training too many actors? That's what we're discussing today. Before we get started, show of the week is The Seagull by Anton Chekhov. It's a play this time. Ooh, changing it up. So I will link to somewhere where you can buy the play script if you want below and also yeah, I'll, I'll link to the Wikipedia article if you want to just read about what the play is about. It's just about some theatrical people, some actors, some writers just having an interesting time in Russia, as you do. Sounds like a Chekhov play. I'm rambling, let's stop. This video was sparked by me reading a recent article in The Stage by Amanda Parker about whether or not the industry is training too many actors. And in preparation for this video, I found another article from 2014 by Lynn Gardner in The Guardian about whether the industry is training too many actors. So I'll link both of those articles below for you to read for yourselves. For the Spotlight one, you do have to make like an account so you can read three free articles a month, which is a bit of a pain, but you can read it for free. If you wanna read it, that's just what you have to do. It's a bit long, but hey ho. Firstly, the fact that these articles are seven years apart and actually that the Lynn Gardner article also referenced an older stage article on the same topic which isn't available anymore i couldn't find it it just 404 paged me so i don't think it's up anymore but still shows how prevalent this question has been throughout our industry so i just want to talk about what the articles said and their viewpoints what i agree with which is most of it and also the things that I think the articles missed out that I think are important. So starting off with the stage article because that's the article that I read first. It has some statistics which we love. Some of the statistics include that in 2014 only 2% of actors were making their living off of purely their acting work. Another statistic was that 75% of actors earn less than £5,000 a year from their acting work which thinking about my tax returns seems pretty accurate and both articles do state that there are less acting jobs than actors graduating into the industry the two main takeaways from the stage article was firstly reframing the idea of success what do we mean when we say a successful actor and what do we view as an inappropriate use of actor training and the fact that an actor taking their training but then choosing to work in a different field within the theatre industry or choosing to work in a different industry altogether is not a waste of their training. Actors have a lot of transferable skills. I know this from experience basic listening skills there are people who haven't trained as actors who do not have that and that's just one of the many transferable skills actors have saying that we're training too many actors actually gives a very narrow framing to what success and the purpose of actor training is which i agree with you're not a failure if you decide you don't want to be an actor anymore life choices life choices are fine life choices are great some people realize that they don't want to be actors anymore and that's totally cool you haven't failed at existence it's your life do what you want to do also i would like to quickly point out because i find it really interesting is that both articles on this point of you can train as an actor and just because you don't become an actor doesn't mean it's a waste of your time or a waste of the skills you learned whilst training by saying that not all students who study mathematics then go on to be mathematicians and I just find it really interesting that both of these writers were like what is the antithesis to theatre? Maths! I just find that really interesting and then it just makes me think about A Disappearing Number which was such a good play. I might read it today. I think I'm gonna reread A Disappearing Number. It's a play about maths just so you know that's why I mentioned it. Maybe that should have been the show of the week. Bonus show of the week, a disappearing number. The other point made in the stage article was the lack of practical application skills taught alongside the actual craft of acting within training. So many drama schools don't teach their students properly about how to do their taxes, how to be a freelance business person, the fact that they'll probably need survival jobs and the reality of being a jobbing actor, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make my whole channel, which then makes actors less prepared for the industry. They can't take the necessary steps to actually get those jobs and actually be gainfully employed. And the 2014 Guardian article covered similar bases. However, the Guardian article also mentions the fact that a lot of courses, particularly university drama courses, 
aren't transparent about the standard of training they offer. I might make a video about the difference between going to drama school and going to university. If you want that video, let me know in the comments. But essentially, when you're going to a university, you tend to have less contact time and less practical opportunities to work on the skill of acting. It's a more academic process. There are some professors at these universities who don't admit to their students but know that their students are going to that course wanting to become professional actors but the level they're at now is not talented enough and they can't learn the skills that they'd need to be a successful professional actor. If you think just going to university alone is going to get you there you might end up disappointed and then that can cause people to not be gainfully employed in the profession and eventually drop out. All of these are very valid points and I actually agree with a lot of them. From my own experience we got like an hour workshop on how to do our taxes and that was it. Resting jobs were basically not discussed at all. I can't speak to university drama or theatre courses because I didn't do one of those but I can speak for my university music degree and even in that there wasn't a lot of preparing you for what it's like to be a, a jobbing music professional whether that's a composer or a musician or a musicologist or whatever i think it's kind of endemic at this point they just don't cover how to actually have a job and live in a society in the fields that you chose to work in but one big thing that i want to talk about that the stage didn't touch at all and the guardian kind of touched on was enabling actors to have active agency in the theatre industry beyond just writing to casting directors and going to auditions. Whether that's through creating your own work or being able to reach out to and collaborate with other theatre creatives as a collaborator, as an equal, as opposed to someone looking for a job. Now I want to say right off the bat I'm not saying that every single actor should want to also write or compose or direct or produce. Slight tangent, I don't think shoulding actors is just helpful anyway. With this and my second point, I'm just speaking from experience here so this might not be true of every single drama school or every single drama course. It might have been the fact that I trained specifically in musical theatre and the nature of musical theatre training. It could have just been my drama school. It could have been that I did a one-year course instead of a three-year course so there wasn't enough time. So if you've trained as an actor and my experience is vastly different to yours, cool, I'm glad. And also this is not to say that my drama school experience was awful or completely pointless either. It's just something in hindsight that I've noticed that I'm like, huh, how would things have been different if these things happened? So starting off with creating your own work. Firstly, my experience of drama school is like we weren't taught how to make our own work. The closest we got was our cabaret project where we were given a scenario and we had to make a half hour cabaret in groups for that scenario. From my experience watching people that I trained with or have worked with who have gone on to like try and make their own work or are actually making their own work I should say or kind of the people I've seen on social media it seems to me as an outside observer again I could be wrong that the people who have made that step tend to fall into two categories. Hiya editing me these two categories exclude people who just got lucky, like they just happen to be involved in a project, not expecting it to go anywhere. Maybe it's something with friends or they're doing it just for fun and it just gets picked up by someone and blows up. I'm not talking about those kind of serendipitous, just kind of falling into opportunities kind of situations. I'm talking about people who are actively like, how can I make stuff happen? if that makes sense. The first category is people who know people in the theatre industry that can actually advise them and nurture them outside the scope of however they trained. Who can tell them writing to casting directors isn't enough. You should be looking into trying to make your own work. Have you thought about starting a theatre company? Have you thought about writing your own stuff? Have you thought about directing? Enabling and encouraging people who thought I just want to be an actor to think about other things that they could do and to make those opportunities for themselves. And the second category is people who were doing that non-acting theatrical stuff anyway, who want to carry on doing that despite 
their training being purely acting based and so because they want to carry on writing their own stuff or because they want to compose as well they ask the necessary questions how practically do I do that within the industry and that's wonderful if you fall into those two categories but then I think about people like myself who I think are the vast majority of people who go to drama school to train as an actor because they want to be an actor and therefore by the time you get to a point a few years out where you're like huh I actually don't feel as creatively fulfilled as I want to be I'm not working as often as I want to be maybe I should try making my own work you're having to do it completely on your own without a support network of an institution behind you not having people that you can go and ask how do I do this not necessarily knowing how to direct or how to write and I don't mean not knowing things that to be honest a lot of it you can pick up by osmosis as actors we're around directors we're around writers we're around theatre work but just the practicalities of like how to build a writing habit or how to come up with ideas for stories or how to run a room effectively how to get the most out of your actors how to approach people for funding how to do funding applications you could have the best idea in your head like your magnum opus three act the geese are with me with this the geese are with me your magnum opus three act musical the nash would love it everywhere five stars world tour if you don't know how to put that on paper and once you have it on paper you don't know how to find a producer or how to get arts council funding how to do the application how is it going to get put on unless you just have the money in your bank account to be like i'll just bankroll myself that's not even signposted or at least for me it wasn't this month will be six years since I did my final show at RAM. So next month technically will be six years since I graduated. I found out that as an individual, you could apply for Arts Council funding about six weeks ago. No one mentioned it to me. No one mentions it. Again, I'm not saying that every actor is gonna wanna make their own work. There'll be plenty of actors who are like, yeah, no, I don't wanna write the thing, that's long. I don't wanna direct. I've gotta tell people what to do. I don't wanna produce, it's maths, I hate it. But there will be some actors who, if they were given the signposting and given the idea and the opportunity to be like, hey, maybe this is something you should look into, would take that opportunity. And even if they didn't, take that opportunity straight away further on down the line when their priorities change would be like well at least I know roughly how to get started signposting people to be like if you're interested in writing your own stuff because that's a useful thing to do when you're out there here are some free resources this theater does a workshop this theater does a course yeah so that's the first thing and then secondly teaching actors to approach other theater creators as collaborators this one is tricky but I think it stems from the training and again this might just be my training one year musical theatre or it might be endemic in many different types of course the training being about we are preparing you for the industry by the industry I mean i.e the production companies houses venues shows that are already established within the industry and have a lot of prestige which is not the whole industry as we know which at least for musical theater is like we're training you for the west end or at the very least shows that will transfer to the west end and the little other gigs you get in between is like fine but the west end is preparing you for jobs that already exist in a way and the vast majority of acting work is jobs that already exist actors are the last people to be hired onto a creative project usually that relationship between you and the audition panel in terms of the power dynamic is by nature unequal and this is not me saying that oh that's terrible we've got to smash the system tear everything down there are ways you can try and equal that out like it's useful to go in with the mindset of you can always say no to the job not having that scarcity mindset you can go in in the mindset of a collaborator and being like these are people i want to work with to make something together those are all really good things that you should be doing anyway but at the end of the day 
they decide whether they're going to offer you the job or not and that is inherently taking a little bit of power away from you i think as actors either subconsciously or not even though there's so much advice about don't just be about you're trying to get something out of a person when you're networking it's about a real connection subconsciously especially because the emphasis is on casting directors it is about trying to get a job. Your interaction with the casting director is not about the work itself necessarily. To an extent it is. I'm sure some casting directors have a preference on the type of work that they cast for. So in that sense, you can be like, I know you cast Shakespeare. I'm really into Shakespeare boom but it's not the same as going up to a director and being like I really love your work I love what you say in the pieces that you create that's what I'm really interested in as well as an actor I'm interested in telling the types of stories that you tell that's a completely different dynamic and it's a dynamic that I don't think is fostered in actors it's not taught in actors how do you actually talk to other theatre creatives on a level and not like oh I'm an actor hire me please and so then that was just down to your own personal level of charisma and I've never been good at networking um it's probably the years of low self-esteem but for some people that doesn't come naturally and so you're like how do I now do this? I think it hinders us because it puts us in that less powerful position of like, we have to wait for someone to give us an opportunity. If you've never thought about making your own work beforehand and you're on your own, you're out of drama school and you have no idea how to approach people, it's like, well, I have this idea. I have no idea how to write it, for example, and I have no idea how to get a director to direct it. And I have no idea how to get money to finance it. And I think that's why a lot of people end up falling out of the industry because when they're like, what I've trained to do isn't working out for me, it's either, well, I've got to try and muddle my way through finding another way of making it work, which is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Muddle your way through and hope that you get out the other side with something, however long it takes or you keep on pushing to try and make the thing that you're trying to do eventually work and for some people it will like sometimes it's just a, a change of look at, like you get older and you're more suited to your casting or you change your hair or whatever it is and then boom you're what everyone wants or you drop out and again dropping out is not failure per se but I think there are probably a lot of actors who if they were able to help themselves wouldn't have dropped out or not have dropped out so quickly which is a shame and then this other thing about not only teaching actors how to be their own business and how to do their taxes and self-care and everything like that but also teaching them how to make their own work and slash or network collaboratively with other creatives means that actors are in the position to make their own jobs <laughs> if you teach actors how to come up with an idea how to see that through to a finished piece and then how to get it financed either through funding applications or other types of financing they can then pay themselves for that work that helps fix the deficit in acting jobs so that's that's that on that so what's the solution to this because i don't want to just be like drama school should do this like what if you're thinking of applying to drama school or you're an, you're an actor, you've graduated right now and you're like, oh damn, why did I not think about this? If you're looking at becoming an actor, whether that's going to drama school or whatever, especially if you're looking at courses, maybe just have a look at A, how many graduates then go on to work in the industry. Try and find out that information to make sure that the course that you're on actually gives you a fairly decent chance in the grand scheme of things of becoming a professional actor and actually working. Compare the schools that you want to go to with other schools that are kind of well known for churning out working, jobbing actors, even if it's in disciplines that you're not interested in. It will just give you a wide spectrum of what you should expect. The more data you have, the more you can see what's a good percentage and what's a bad percentage. Editing me again, I forgot to say my second point, which was once you get to drama school, if your drama school has multiple different departments, don't be afraid to reach out to the teachers and students within those departments, especially if your drama school doesn't foster that within the way that it runs. And if you're in a drama school that doesn't have other departments, ask your teachers about how 
work is put on, even just asking about how a piece goes from being in someone's head or in a group of people's heads to actually being put on stage will give you more of an idea of how the whole industry ecosystem works rather than you being in your own little acting bubble and then having to try and figure that out once you get out into the industry. So yeah, ask questions. If you're not planning on going to drama school, I would say have a think about if there are any other theatrical disciplines you'd be interested in dabbling in as well or strings to add to your bow like non-performing strings if there is something like oh i've always liked directing like shows in our amdram thing then you know maybe see if you can keep that going in some capacity if you're a graduated actor and you've done your drama training and you like me <laughs> Are kind of like I want to have more control over my career or I want to start making my own work. I will link a load of resources down in the description that A I found helpful and B are there that maybe I haven't explored yet but they're run by reputable people so it, you know you might want to check them out. It's important to start but don't set the bar too high too early on especially if you're new like if you've never written anything in your life be kind to yourself you don't have to write a play this month <laughs> if you've never written a play before from everything that i've read about thus far sometimes you have to push through the naff because you can tweak it later that's especially true with writing you can edit something bad into something good you can't make something good if it's not on the page in the first place get it down on paper see how crap it is and then fix it you know, I guess with directing it's the same, having worked with directors, you know, you have an idea of what you want in the head, get it up on its feet, and then if you're like, nah, it doesn't work, you fix it in the next rehearsal, so yeah. If you're interested in producing, I am not a producer, don't take my word for it, but my understanding is it's basically budgeting. Start learning how to budget, even if you start off with something small, and then from there, budgeting a show is basically an extended version of that. When you put on a show, you need to budget for the costumes, the venue, the rehearsal room, paying everyone, you know, just getting used to doing that kind of accounting, bookkeeping, maths, I think would stand you in good stead. And then learn how to do grant applications. I will link to the Arts Council website so you can look through their guidance on how to do applications for them. I'm looking into how to do grant applications myself and Basically the advice I've had is look at successful applications and how they were filled out and talk to people who did those successful applications. <laughs> so if you want to produce, I guess the same thing, reach out to producers and be like, hey, can I shadow you? Can we have a chat? And I know this video has kind of been harping on about the holes in our training as is something I'm still working on, but it is helpful is try not to dwell on what the holes are in your training try and focus instead on what you can do now to make your situation better or to get closer to where you want to be and remember what your experiences have given you thus far your life has been full of a myriad of experiences and they will have all given you something that you can use for whatever your next stage is so yeah hold on to that so are we training too many actors i personally think no but what we're not doing is equipping actors with the tools to make jobs for themselves and have more agency and more realistic expectations about the industry which is kind of basically what these two articles said so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video what do you guys think about this topic do you think there are too many actors please let me know if you enjoy this video please consider liking and subscribing would love to have you on the channel come on down plenty of room consider buying me a coffee if you'd like to stay tuned for more theater content from a uk perspective and i will see you all in my next video bye friends